Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Mordor troll for Middle Earth Strategy Battle game. If you like the channel and you'd like to support me, please like, comment and subscribe. And my Coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now, on to the video. So this is the finished Mordor troll. Happy with how it turned out. There's a few little bits that I might change on it to do with the legs, but other than that I'm generally happy. The one thing that I did learn from this miniature is that it has some terrible mould lines and joins in the bottom of those legs. Now onto the video, and we're going to start with Citadel Iron Hand Steel. And there's loads of it you can do on this, mainly because he's a big old fella. So you've got plenty of bits of armour and stuff like that. You can see the most part I've done here. Just left a few little bits black and painted over a few bits so that you can see me painting some of that. We're going to paint all of the armour in Iron Hand Steel and then move on. Next colour is Citadel Baneblade Brown. I'm going to use this to do all of the kind of leather straps and the leather belt, the bits that are holding on the armour, and also the skin on his lower legs and his face and a few little bits around the sides of his chest as well. I'm going to do him so that he's got sort of like a dark brown on his back and where those sort of like looks like little scaly bits are on the back and front of his legs. And then that's going to go into the sort of like the creamy Rakarth flesh type colour on his gut and the front of his face. Now we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Corn Red. This is going to be to the base colour of his loincloth. We're also going to use this for the inside of his mouth as well. That's a little bit of Citadel Thondia Brown, obscured by the end of my paintbrush, and this is going to be through the shaft of the spear that he's got. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Talarn Sand. It's going to be to do a little bit of rope just behind those spiky bits on his spear. I'm going to use some Citadel Contrast snake bite Leather. I'm going to use this to do the little patches of material underneath the straps and the armour plates. I reckon that'll probably be leather, so snake bite Leather would be quite a nice fitting colour for that. Next up is Citadel Gorgrunter Fur Contrast. I'm going to use this to do all of the straps and his belt. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Wildwood Contrast. I'm going to use this to do all of the darker areas of skin, so basically his torso going around to the front of his body, where we are going to use a little bit of a lighter shade on there. We're also going to use this on the areas where he's got those kind of knobbly bits on his skin. And we're also going to use this to do the skin of his upper legs, where that blends to the lighter shade at the knee. So the upper part of his legs are mainly going to be Wildwood.
to do the Bane Blade brown sections of skin, we're going to use Citadel at Grax Earthshade to shade those areas and get the details standing out on those. Use Citadel Null Oil, and that is going to be to do all of the silver areas of the miniature, including the point of the spear and those spiky bits part way along. Final shade for now is going to be Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. We are going to use this to do his loincloth and also his mouth. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Thondia Brown. I'm going to use this to do the areas where we use the wild wood so we're going to leave the shade in the recesses on these little knobbly bits and we're just going to use the thundia brown on the bits of skin around there and on top of those little scaly parts on him we're also going to work on the skin of his neck and that here if you think about how the skin and the muscle things would be on a human and just multiply them a little bit so they're a bit bigger that's the kind of effort that we're going to go for on this skin at the back here so now I'm going to add a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown to the Thondia Brown and we're going to start highlighting the brown that we've just done. Now as always think about where the light is coming from and where those highlights are going to be on the miniature. So you want to be making sure that you're doing maybe about 50% of the Thondia Brown with this colour or colour mix. And it's going to be the top areas that will be catching the most light so the light is coming down from above. Now I'm going to mix a little bit more Bane Blade Brown with the previous mix and do another area of highlights. Again, you're probably going to do about 50% of the area you've just done with the previous mix. And just add a little bit more light to those sections that will be catching the most light. Next up it's some pure Bane Blade Brown to add another little layer of highlights here. Now you can probably tell from when I'm doing the skin, doing the skin as though it's quite wrinkly. I do seem to have quite thick, almost like rhino-like skin I think, on the film. So that's what I'm kind of going for here with the creases and the wrinkles being quite thick. And I'm going to use some Citadel Rakar Flesh and mix that with the previous mix to lighten that right up. I'm going to start doing the highlights on the lower leg. Get a little bit of a highlight going on all those sections that will be catching the light. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Rock Hearth Flesh on its own and we're just going to do some highlights on the skin and some more or less edge highlights just to make those details and creases stand out.
I'm also going to use a little bit of Vallejo Red Shade. I'm going to use this just to do a few little bits around his mouth and also his fingernails. Just put a really tiny amount of this on just to give them a hint of colour. We can do a little line of Rakar flesh around the edge of them to look like an actual fingernail, as you can see there, using Rakar flesh. Next up, we're going to use a tiny little bit more of Rakar flesh, and this is just to do his teeth. So pick them out individually, and we can move on to the next colour. I've already done the Nuln Oil on his armour and his weapons blade. We're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Agraxair shade just to kind of tarnish this and make it look quite weathered and grimy because he's probably not going to be taking the best care of his kit. So if you'd use this in around the creases and around the edges or if you wanted to go over the whole thing you could do. The more you put on the grimier it gets just make sure it doesn't pull too much because when it does pull sometimes the colours separate and it looks a bit naff. We're going to work on the straps for his armour now and his belt. I'm going to use Citadel Mournfang Brown, using this to do a bit of a highlight on the belt itself. We've got that gore grunt affair, it goes into the recess and gives them a nice dark shade and also gives that kind of nice red brown almost for the rest of it. So you can use this Mournfang Brown as a little bit of a highlight for that. And that'll, give you, that'll give you three nice shades across the straps and the belt. Now adding a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown to the Mournfang Brown. We're going to start doing this like we usually do for the edges of pouches and things like that. We're going to use the tip of the brush to get some nice little rough edges on there. So you're going to be doing horizontal brush strokes against the verticals, and vertical brush strokes against the horizontals to give them rough edges to make it look like they're all scuffed and scraped. Same kind of thing with the straps on the arms and the ones on his back. Just kind of do the edges of each strap roughly so it's got an uneven line going around it because you don't want those scuffs to be all smooth and, and blocky and kind of very straight edged then we're going to add a little bit more ballo brown to the previous mix to lighten that one final time so you use an even thinner brush just to do the final scrapes and scuffs on those leather belts I'm going to use some pure Ballor Brown. This is going to be on the snake bite leather sections. We're just going to use this to do a highlight of scuffing, similar to what you've just done on the straps. So you want it to look quite rough as though it's scraped and scuffed because that's going to be rubbing against his body if his arms are by his sides or getting scuffed while he's in combat and that kind of thing. Now I'm going to add a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh to the Balor Brown and we are just going to do the same again but in a smaller area of doing those scuffs and making those edges and creases and stuff look as though they have been scuffed and scraped. Now we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Pink Horror. It's just to do a little bit on his tongue. If the colour looks a little bit weird, it is because for some reason it recorded it, made it look really cold, so the whites and colours all had this blue hue to them, so I've warmed up that bit of footage, but the colour's not quite right. I'm going to use a little bit of white now to do his eyes. Now they're a bit bigger than most models, I'd always say do them from the centre out to the side of the face but this time it doesn't really matter because his face is big enough that you can get in there and get the eyes from whatever angle you want. 
I'm going to use a tiny little spot of black just to do the pupils. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get the pupils so they are looking down as though where that spear is aiming. If there's someone stood there, the eyes will be looking at him. I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo red wash. And we're just going to do a little bit of this around his mouth and across his eyes as well. So it looks a little bit red and bloodshot, all that dust and fighting. I'm going to use Citadel Talarn Sand to put some colour back onto the string or rope which is wrapped around the spear. So what I'm doing here, just out of shot so you can't see it, is doing it sort of like leaving a little gap. You can kind of drag the brush across if you're very careful. Leave a little gap in between it and it looks like you've got those kind of striations that you get in rope. I can't think what the name of it is where the twine is going round and you have the like little in bits and the little out bits. So you would paint in the out bits, but you can get that effect by dragging the brush slowly across them. Now we're going to use a little bit of Thondia Brown. We're going to reapply some colour to the top few surfaces of the spear. You're now going to add a little bit of Citadel XV88 to the Thondia Brown. And this is going to be the first highlight on the wood of the spear. Can leave the spear as is to be honest, doesn't look too bad. So, what we're going to move on to is Citadel Iron Hand Steel. You can use this to do some rough, almost like you're dry brushing it on over the smooth surfaces as well as the edges and ridges and things like that. Just get a little bit on your brush and gently brush that around so you've got the shiny bits, but there's plenty of dullness showing through and those shades in all the recesses to make those really bring out the details in that armor. We are now going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to do some edge highlights on those metallics. You can get the detail to really stand out. If you use a straight line, remember to drag the brush away from the point. Don't try and do it sideways, do it sort of straight down to angle the miniature. That way you'll be able to get those really nice straight lines to make it look like a sword blade or something like that has scraped down the arm. You'll get that nice thin straight line from the tip of the brush. Now I'm going to use Citadel Corn Red to paint the raised areas on the loincloth and get them to stand out, give them a bit of colour. Remember to leave the shade in the recesses. Think about where the light is going to catch them, so the further under him it gets, the darker it is going to be. This bit on his butt you can do quite nicely and get some nice angles and ridges and crests on there because that will be catching quite a bit of light because he's leaning forward too. Now we're going to use a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to do about 50% of the area we've just done on the loincloth with corn red. So this is going to be the first highlight onto the corn red there. Like I did with the Moran and Orc cloth. It's got that deep red to begin with and then it seems to have an orangey kind of colour at the end. So that's what we're going for here. The final colour we're going to use is Citadel Wild Rider Red to give that nice deep and dark orange colour, the final highlight to this cloth. So this is the finished Mordor Troll. Really pleased with how it turned out. It's got some nice colours on there. Nice lot of different browns which don't blend together, which is quite pleasing. But really pleased with how he turned out, and he's ready to stab some good guys with his spear.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to all the social media linked below. Thanks very much. Like the channel, enjoy the content, and you'd like to support me, please like, comment, and subscribe. My coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.